Imagine if every single time a vehicle drives over a speed breaker, electricity gets generated not from the engine, not from any extra fuel, just from the natural motion of the car being compressed and then pushed back up. Thousands of vehicles cross speed breakers every single day on roads around the world. And right now, all of that energy just disappears as heat in your car's suspension system. Completely wasted. But what if I told you we could capture that exact energy and feed it directly into your home's electrical grid without changing anything about how vehicles work? That wasted energy could power your house. Here is something most people do not know. When you drive a car, only 14 to 16 percent of the fuel's energy actually moves your car forward. Where does the rest go? 62.5% becomes waste heat from the engine. Another 17.2% gets wasted when the car is standing still or idling. And then there is the suspension system. Every single bump, every pothole, every speed breaker compresses your car's suspension. That compression stores massive amounts of energy. And then what happens? The spring pushes back. All that energy dissipates as heat inside the shock absorber. Just gone. In a single city, millions of vehicles create billions of these compression cycles every day. All that energy just wasted as heat. But we are about to change that. Let me explain exactly how your car's suspension works. When a vehicle crosses a speed breaker, the entire car does not go downwards. Instead, the wheels get pushed upwards. This compression pushes on what we call the shock absorber. Inside that shock absorber is a spring. The spring stores energy as it compresses. This is called potential energy. The stronger the spring and the more it compresses, the more energy gets stored. A single heavy truck weighing 35 tons pressing down 8 centimeters stores approximately 13,720 joules of energy. Now here is what happens next. The spring pushes back, the car rises and all of that stored energy just converts to heat and disappears. If we could capture even a fraction of this energy, we could power homes, we could power streets, we could power entire communities. Here is how the system works. Underneath the speed breaker, we install three independent mechanical units with their pistons connected to the bottom of the speed breaker. When a vehicle presses the speed breaker down, this piston moves downward 8 centimeters. This piston also connects to a speed multiplier gearbox, which is ultimately connected to a generator shaft at the end. Think of it as a kickstart process of a motorbike. When kick is applied to start the bike, that little motion turns an engine several times at high speed with the help of the speed multiplier gearbox, which then starts the engine. And then the kick mechanism comes back to its beginning position, same as in its off state. We can use that exact same mechanism but with several times more multiplying speed and at the end position instead of the bike engine there will be a three phase alternator that will generate electricity both when the breaker moves down or when it moves back up after a vehicle has finally crossed it it moves back up with the help of a very powerful spring similar to bike kick mechanism thus pushing up the piston and the speed breaker back to its start position for the next vehicle this multi-stage gearbox takes the slow rotation from the piston and speeds it up approximately 40 times. This method generates high electrical current that can be fed into the power grid. One truck crossing generates electricity 8 to 16 times depending upon the number of tires. Once on the way down, once on the way up, the spring constant we use is approximately 4.3 million newtons per meter. This is strong enough to support a 35 ton truck compressing only 8 centimeters. The energy stored in this compression is significantly significant enough for practical power generation. When the spring releases, it converts that stored potential energy into kinetic energy. The upward motion of the piston is almost as fast as the downward motion. This means we capture nearly the same amount of energy from the spring release as from the initial compression. The speed multiplier gearbox operates at approximately 95% efficiency. This means only 5% of the energy gets lost as friction and heat inside the gears themselves. This is remarkably efficient for mechanical systems. The gears are helical gears which means the teeth are cut at an angle. This design provides smooth engagement and reduces noise compared to straight cut gears. 
The AC generator produces alternating current at approximately 50 cycles per second. This is the standard frequency in most countries globally. The generator efficiency is around 94%, converting 94% of the mechanical rotation energy into electrical energy. When we calculate the total system efficiency from vehicle compression to electricity at the grid connection, we achieve approximately 82% efficiency. This is actually comparable to solar panel efficiency and better than many other renewable energy sources. Now comes the smart part. The electricity from the generator is variable. It changes based on traffic patterns and vehicle weight. That electricity feeds into something called a grid tie inverter. The grid tie inverter does something remarkable. It continuously reads the voltage and frequency of the electrical grid. Then it adjusts the electricity from our generator to match exactly. Same voltage, same frequency, perfect synchronization. This technology is called MPPT, which stands for Maximum Power Point Tracking. The inverter continuously adjusts the operating conditions to extract the maximum possible power from our variable energy source. Once synchronized, the electricity flows directly into the local power grid. Households and industries use this power for their needs. Street lights get powered. Everything operates normally. Why three units under one speed breaker? Simple. A truck is approximately two 2.5 meters wide. When it crosses the speed breaker, it presses on three different areas simultaneously, left side, center, right side. If we install three independent mechanical units at these three positions, all three generate electricity at the same moment. The total output is now three times the single unit output because the load spreads across three systems instead of concentrating on one. This design provides built-in redundancy. If one unit fails, the other two continue operating. The system keeps generating power from the speed breaker even with component failure. All three generators connect to a single grid tie inverter. The combined output becomes synchronized with the grid as one unified feature. Peak output from one truck crossing reaches approximately 10 to 15 kilowatt hours of electrical energy. The exact amount depends on truck weight and approach speed. At a busy highway location with 300 truck crossings per day, a single installation generates approximately 2,190 kilowatt hours of electricity annually. This powers approximately two average households. Multiply this across thousands of speed breakers on highways, and we are talking about powering millions of households. Installation requires an underground chamber approximately 1.5 to 2 meters deep. The chamber must be sealed against water infiltration and dust entry. The environment needs to remain dry and clean for the mechanical components to operate reliably. Compare this with solar panels. Solar only generates during daylight hours. That is approximately 6 to 8 hours per day depending on season. Monsoon season reduces output by 50 to 60 percent due to cloud cover. At night, solar generates nothing. Zero Power. But our speed breaker system generates power 24 hours every single day. Whether it is noon or midnight, whether it is sunny or raining, vehicles keep crossing. Energy keeps getting generated. Wind turbines generate power whenever wind speeds are sufficient. But power output is completely unpredictable. Wind varies hour by hour. A wind turbine might generate full power one hour and almost nothing the next hour. Speed breaker power is predictable. Traffic follows patterns. Rush hours have known timing. We can forecast power generation with reasonable accuracy. This makes the system more valuable to the electrical grid. Solar panels degrade at approximately 0.5 to 0.8 percent annually. After 25 years, they operate at only 88 percent of original capacity. After 50 years, degradation continues. The system keeps losing efficiency. Our mechanical system uses hardened spring steel. With proper engineering, this material maintains its properties for 50 years or longer degradation rate is only 0.3 to 0.5 percent annually, better than solar. Solar panels require regular cleaning to maintain efficiency. Dust, pollen, and dirt reduce output significantly. In dusty environments, cleaning is necessary multiple times per year. Our mechanical system requires periodic bearing lubrication. This is basic maintenance. Once every three to six months, depending on traffic volume, no more complex than routine car maintenance. Does this system hurt ride comfort? No, the vehicle experiences no difference. Does this create additional resistance that increases fuel consumption? No, the energy we capture was already being dissipated as heat. We are simply redirecting that energy to electricity instead of wasting it as thermal energy.
Can these components handle millions of compression cycles? Yes, the springs and gears are engineered for high cycle fatigue. Is this safe? Completely. The chamber is sealed and enclosed underground. Pedestrians do not encounter any moving parts. Imagine speed breakers on 5,000 major highways and industrial roads. That is potentially 10 million households powered from wasted energy that is already being dissipated as heat. There is this great news guys. I have this new website www.electrondeals.com you can see there are so many countries listed for products to buy from Amazon and if not then there is Banggood Worldwide here you can see similar products are going to be listed in two pages just like the other countries and if we click on the buy on Amazon link you are going to be redirected directly to that page of the product from where you can buy you don't have to go and search for the products link will be provided in the description you can check it out so coming back to the video if you found this concept fascinating I have a question for you in this entire system which component do you think is the biggest challenge to implement reliably is it the spring suspension that stores the energy is it the rack and pinion mechanism that converts motion is it the speed multiplier gearbox that amplifies rotation or is it the grid tie inverter that synchronizes with the electrical system put your answer in the comments let me know which part you think most critical and do not forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon share this video with your friends thank you for watching